they have a car or anything like that. And so I came back and lived with my family. Well, at that point, I was kind of mad at God. I was just like, why would you put me through all this stuff? Why would you allow uh, me to, uh, the devil to use me to, to break up a home, a family, and children? And uh, why would you, if you can't trust the pastor, then who can you trust? And, and I just didn't want anything to do with God anymore. And I was just like, this is bull crap. Everybody's a hypocrite. All the church people are hypocrites. You can't even trust the pastor. Well, uh I got my job back, and about two months into it, um, I, somebody sent me an email. I don't even know who it was, but it was out of the blue, and it was talking about the middle of the Bible. Well, the middle of the Bible is Psalms 118, verse 8, and it reads, It is better to put trust in the Lord than to put trust in man. And I was just sitting there in awe, like, oh, my God, you know, all the stuff that, that I was ranting and raving about God, you know, why would you put me through all this stuff? And it was simple. The middle of the Bible says not to put trust in man, but to put trust in the Lord. Yeah. And that no matter uh, who who they are, it's not the suit that makes the man. It's not the the uh, you know the the title of a man that I'm a pastor, or I'm a preacher, or whoever it is. But you should be putting your trust totally 100 percent in God and not in in man. It doesn't matter who they are because we're all wicked. And Isaiah says that I think it's Isaiah that says that. Um, uh, that uh, the heart is deceitfully wicked or desperately wicked above all things who can know it. So oh, our man. hearts are desperate to do wicked, to do evil, no matter who we are. You know, and so, um, and so after that, I was like, wow, you know, God put me through all that stuff just to so show me one principle. And the fact that it was in the middle of the Bible was really weird to me that God would, you know, show me this stuff, even though I had to learn the hard way that God would still show me this stuff. And so we had a church that was like two houses down from mine, and they they would leave their doors open for anybody that would want to come in and pray and, you know, sing songs. So I felt in my mind, well, you know, I'm not going to church or anything, so I, I might as well just go in there and do it on my own time, you know, just go in there and sing songs and pray and read the Bible and stuff like that. And one night I was in there uh, praying and, and reading the Bible, and I can't remember what verse it is, but it talks about how can I, being God, forgive you for your sins if you can't forgive uh, someone else for doing something wrong to you and it convicted me I was like wow you know uh, you know I have unforgiveness in my heart for for this pastor guy and, and all this stuff and so uh, I was like Lord how am I going to do this because I like erased him from all like everything like my MSN accounts my Yahoo accounts I just deleted him I blocked him and everything and I don't even know how this happened but I got home and out of the blue he PMs me and said, I'm praying for you, and I hope that, you know, everything's okay with you, you and your family. I hope that, that God, you know, God's will be done in your life and stuff. And it was like, wow, you know, the same day that I was reading that verse, you know, now God's like, here, here's your shot, you know, to, to forgive him and, and do all that. Well, so he PMs me, and, and, and I PMed him back, and I said, well, you know, I forgive you, and, and we started talking again. I was like, you know... I have stuff in my own life that, that I've done against God. I've backstabbed people before. I've deceived people before. I've lied to people before. And, uh, you know, it would be, uh, it would be unrighteous of me to, to say that you're, you're worse, a worse person than I am and to say that what you've done to me that I can't forgive that, you know. Yeah. And so I forgave him and stuff like that. And so we started talking. You know, and, and it doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter who you are. You're still going to have struggles in this life. You're still going to uh, sin. You're still going to have, uh, you know, temptation that comes and goes, you know. And and so it doesn't really matter who you are, if you're a pa pastor or a preacher or if you've been in the church for 50 years. It doesn't matter. We're all the same. We're all in the same boat. And so I felt like, you know, you know, just forgive him and, and love him, you know, show, show people love. That, that's the two commandments that God gave us was love God and then love people around you, you know, and, if, and just to, to go based off the fundamentals of, of God. And, and people get so big that they think they're, they're above and beyond the fundamentals of, of the faith, and that's where we lose it. Yeah, and you know, the fundamentals so people, are love and faith. You so know? many people will blame him when everything goes wrong. Right. They, they blame him. They just, you know, and that's why so many atheists today are former believers. Mm -hmm. You know, God took their wife, their child, whatever, uh, they blame it, their deaths on him, or the fact that, that you know, she ran off on me, or she divorced me, or they blame everything evil that happens to them on God. Right. And it God uses so every, every instance and every circumstance in our lives 
to bring us closer to him if we allow him to. Right. Instead, so many people fall short and, and put up a big block and a big wall and start blaming him for the thing that happened. So he can't make good of the thing that happened. He allows things to happen to his yeah. people. He allows his people to be tested. He doesn't always step in and, 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 and save the day for anyone. He allows his people to go through trials. Right. You know, and, and, and it's for the betterment of them, you know, yes. even if it's if, like with Job, you know, I had to look at Job and be like, wow, you know, my, my problems are nothing compared to that. But getting back to the story, so we started talking again, and um, I, so we talked for another three months or whatever, and then, then he decided, well, you know, we, we've talked about it, and, and, you know, I'm sorry for it and all this stuff, and, and so he said, if you still want to come back, because I believe that you're, you're meant to be in this church and be in this ministry, you can come back and stay with me until you get on your feet and everything. So I went back, and this time I stayed for about two and a half years. Well, rumors started going around in the church that he was gay, and what's a 55-year-old man doing with a 22-year-old guy in the same house, you know, and stuff like that. And so people started leaving the church. Well, um, you know, I felt like, well, it would be selfish for me to stay because, you know, all these people are leaving, even though I know it's, it's good for me, you know, to be here to be in a house with a pastor where, you, you know, it's good to have uh, somebody to be accountable to, you know, somebody to, to uh, uh, be, be real with, you know, to, to tell them all your problems and, and have them be prayed for, you know, like James says that, uh, you know, confess your sins one to another that they may be healed, prayed for and healed. And, and it's really good to have, uh, you know, like iron sharp, sharpens iron, so will a man sharpen another man. You know that that we could come together and and uh, have that accountability partner to talk to, and and who better else to have than than a pastor or, or somebody older that you can look up to, and so. Um, but I felt like it was selfish for me to stay there uh, for you know the people were leaving and the fact that I was there they were having troubles with with me being there, and the Bible says don't let your good be sp spoken evil of. and so I felt like well you know I just need to get out of here I need to to you know I could still. Uh, follow God and, and do that uh, somewhere else. So I, I decided to leave and and uh, go visit my brother, which was in Southwest Kansas still. And then that was in May to July. And then in July of this year, July 22nd, I just moved up to Washington, which is where I'm staying right now with my parents right now. And and I'm in a really good church called Foursquare here in uh, Richland, Can which Richland, Washington. And um, and I, I just still feel like God is, is leading and guiding me. Even though all that bad stuff has happened, um, I still don't blame God. I praise Him even the more for it all, that, that God has, has brought me through it all and that He's taught me and that He showed me that, you know, He loves me so much that, uh, you know, uh, all things are working together for my good. And, and no matter what happens, that He's still going to be there. He's never going to forsake me nor leave me. And that, that um, you know, even though trials and tribulations. God never uh, promised us a, a, an easy life or anything like that, um, that, you know, it, it's all going to strengthen me and, and better me, um, not only for my own sake, but for the people around me. Mm -hmm. And I, I believe that that's why I'm telling my testimony tonight on, on your show, so people will know that, you know, if you're going through some hard trials, if, if, if there's people that have hurt you or, or uh, done something to you that, that was in the church that you really looked up to, whether it be a pastor or um, you know, in my case, it was a pastor and the guy that led me to God. And I hear the music right now, but um, I just want to, you know, let everybody know that, that God's still there and He still loves you. All right, well, thanks for sharing that with us tonight, Mark. I'm going to have to wrap up the first hour so we can come back to the, to the second. Uh, but thanks for sharing that and thanks for calling in. And I hope I know that you did bless others out there that blessed me with sitting and listening to it. Thank you. Okay. Stop I love you, Sherry. Bye. Bye. We're going to wrap up the first hour, folks. We're going to take a five-minute break, and then we'll be back for the second half. I'll see you then. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Wise men follow him.